Well, good morning once again, and welcome to Journey Church. I'm Pastor Eric, and we're so glad that you're here with us. One more round of applause for those who are joining us online today. A round of applause for that Celebrate Recovery worship team. They did a great job. Little known fact, we actually do have a Friday night service, 7 p.m. here at Journey Church. It's a recovery service. It's for people who have hurts, habits, and hang-ups of any kind. Um, all of us have them to a degree, so it's great for anyone to actually show up. Um, I'm going to actually be speaking there this Friday night at 7 p.m., so if you're looking for something to do this Friday night, join us at Celebrate Recovery. We also have our summer events calendar, which has just been published. Feel free to grab one of those and take it with you. We have a lot of fun events that are um, scheduled to be going on during the course of the summer. Really just an opportunity for us to stay connected with one another. We realize a lot of people are on vacation and transitioning, so it's a wonderful opportunity to hang out with one another. Um, our next event is Family Skate Night. It is happening this Thursday night at Skate Station right down the street. Come on out and get your skate on with us at 6 p.m. We hope to see you out there. And we just set up our table for the July 4th outreach out in the lobby. Um, we would love for, uh, to spend 4th of July with you and your family at Moose Haven and Orange Park. We're taking sign-ups right now to be out there in the community, making a difference that afternoon and early evening, and we're going to watch the fireworks together at the end of the night. So I hope you'll join us. Sign up for that out there in the lobby. Um, before we get into today's message, I just wanted to share my heart a little bit. This morning um, has been a powerful weekend already. We've seen many people come up and surrender their lives to the Lord at the end of each of our services, and God is up to something, and I just have some weight on my shoulders as I look around the room today and as I walked in this morning with some of the people that I encountered and watched, and um, you know, I looked on the stage, and there's people that were on the stage, and they were just, I knew what was going on in their life, and I knew the pain that they they were going through even as of last night and I talked to them this morning and they're struggling and they're dealing with heavy heavy situations yet they stand up there and they're worshiping God in the midst of it I think of ladies like Pam Hagel who was sitting right about there during our first service and Pam you know has incredible pain in her body at almost all times and when given the opportunity to be up there anytime you ask her she's up there behind the keyboard and she's praising and she's worshiping she doesn't care what pain it is she's going to continue to worship her God through the midst of that pain. There was a guy named Mike who sat right back there this morning, and I met him for the first time. It was his first time walking through Journey, and he came in, and you could just see the pain on his face as he walked in, and um, his sister and their family actually come to the church, and they didn't show up, and he's like, I didn't care. I still needed to show up this morning, and at the end of the service, he walked down and surrendered his life to God at the end of the service, and you could see the pain that was in his face. We had a a lady named Cheryl Gonzalez who was here. She runs First Coast Women's Services, and I looked out at her. She was sitting about there, and I said, Cheryl, I pray for the day that you don't have a job because, you know, men are standing up to be men, and ladies are being ladies in that regard, and, and they were there loving on one another and caring for one another, and you don't need a place for women who are abused or women who are expecting children to come to that are out of wedlock, that are at the most vulnerable place in their life. We long for that day. I stand here, I see Chaplain Matty, I'll pick on him. I long for the day that you don't have a job, brother. I pray for it. I pray that the jails go empty, that the Spirit of God would just sweep over this area and this region, and that you know we would see the people getting set free in that regard where they never have to go back to a place like that. Do you hear what I'm saying? I fear that our generation could be a generation where they say about us when that great cloud of witnesses, this is the generation that America fell apart. This is the generation where America disintegrated. If we don't step up and be the men and women of God that he's called us to be, if we don't actually live out this thing called Christianity, the great cloud of witnesses might look at us and say, what happened on their watch? So as we get into today's message, I hope it inspires you to look in the mirror. I hope it challenges you to face your fears. I hope it challenges you to get out there and deal with those things so that you can go out and make a difference because I don't want that cloud of witnesses to look back on us. You see, there were seasons in the life of Christianity, seasons in the life cycle of God. I read about them this morning in the one-year Bible where there's kings that would rise up and they would do good things and they would follow after God and society would benefit 
benefit as a result of that. And there were other times and seasons where the people didn't follow after God and bad things happened. And those are written down in the Bible for all to read. I don't want to be in one of those generations where it talks about generation X in America didn't do their job. And this is why they didn't go out there. And this is what happened in America as a result. Not on our watch. Do you hear me in Jesus name? Not on our watch. Would we rise up and be the people of God that he's called us to be? As I look around the room, maybe you're a guest here today. You're not plugged into any church. We're looking for people who are fired up, who want to serve God with all their heart, strength, soul, and mind, who are tired of seeing what's going on in our society and seeing the people get hurt and hurting. We need you to come alongside of us to further the gospel through this ministry so that we can touch and change lives in this region and beyond. Can I get one more amen today? So Father, we bow our heads and close our eyes and Father, I thank you for the passion that you've put on our hearts to see lives changed in your name. So Jesus, we ask you to come right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we dig into your word, I know that there's going to be moments that are going to challenge us. I know that there's going to be moments that are going to cause us to think, hopefully moments that are going to cause us to repent, but also moments that are going to encourage us and fire us up and help us to better realize and understand the grace of God, the freedom that we have in you, the peace that comes in a relationship with you and how we can be overcomers in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. So would you touch our hearts? Would you touch our minds today as we get into your word? Give us power to put it into practice in our everyday lives in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Amen. So let's get into today's message. It is entitled, The Man in the Mirror. But at the same time, ladies, you can look in the mirror too. Come on, ladies are good at looking in the mirror sometimes, right? So this is one for actually both of us, even though it's a, a Father's Day message in some senses and geared towards the guys to a degree. A number of years ago, I picked up a book that was called Body for Life. It was a book by a man named Bill Phillips, and it was one of those diet and exercise books where um, they have pictures on the front and on the outside of it where there's the before picture, right? And then there's the after picture on the other side. And how many of you have looked at those kinds of books and said, there's no way they doctored up that after picture? Come on, can you relate to what I'm saying today? So you know the kind of book that I'm talking about. They show that before picture, they show the after picture, and Mary Jo and I read the book, we looked at the diet stuff, we started to do the workouts and we made some progress as we were doing it because we were putting the things that it said into practice and it was somewhat painful but it was also enjoyable when we started seeing some of the results of it Um, but one of the things that the book said that I did not really like was that in order to receive maximum progress with relationship to this program you must take the before picture Now, how many of you, um, if you're not feeling necessarily your best, you're not looking the best that you would like near your personal best, you know that you're not maybe eating right or or all those things, how many of you are just, I'm just ready to get up there and take the before picture, right? You're ready to just jump up there on the scale. Nobody's with me today. Come on, right? We we don't like that moment. We don't want to get out there and we don't want to get up there on the scale. We know that it's petrifying. It's scary for us. But the book kind of said, if you're not willing to go through that, then guess what? You'll never fully achieve or receive the full benefits of this. It also said that um, one of the things that you might do is take a picture, one of those after pictures, um, find some one of these pictures that you like and put it in a prominent place and use it as a form of inspiration. So we read this book some time ago. Um, I've always been a bit of an MMA fan. In the early days of MMA, there was this guy named Boss Rutten. And Boss Rutten, man, he had, he had a body type maybe similar to mine. He had broad shoulders. He was a real tough guy that he was there. Unfortunately, only he had this six pack that, you know, I can only dream of, you know. So I took his picture and I put it up there on there. I still have it today. And man, that, that's, that's what my body's going to look like someday when I grow up in Jesus name, right? He had that, that sweet, you know, just, he, he was a man's man. And I was like, yeah, this, this is what I'm attaining after. So he gave a, a visual of what the future desired state would look like. So I know I'm using some physical fitness analogies. So let's start to bring it back to some spiritual analogies along the same lines. Roman 12:1. Appeal to you, therefore, brothers, in the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. 
This should not be a new verse if you've been around Journey any length of time. It's pretty much the life verse for us for the course of this year. It's a verse where he's saying that he calls us to be living sacrifices. This, for you, in a spiritual sense, is the after picture. This is the spiritual life with six-pack abs. This is the boss root and picture. This is the life that I think most of us as Christians desire to live out. I think somewhere deep down inside we say, I want to live my life out as a living sacrifice for God. I don't want the things of this world to matter. I don't want to be enticed by them. I don't want to go back and fall into the things of this world. I want to focus my heart, my strength, my soul on living for the King of Kings each and every day. So this is that ideal state of where I think we would like to be as believers. It's a place where we put God first in everything we do, a place where we make sound spiritual decisions, a place where we lead our families well. It's a place where we're fired up for God and the things of this world really don't matter all that much. Romans 12, 2 goes on to say, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. You know, uh, yesterday I went to one of our small groups, the Faith and Fitness small group, and I had an opportunity to share along the lines of this. If you're looking for one, that's a good one to go to. 10.30 in the morning on Fleming Island, look it up out there. It was a, a great time. And one of the things that I started to share was a little bit along the lines of this. Um, it says, do not be conformed to the image of this world. So let's go back to our physical fitness analogy. You know, I kind of like working out. I, I enjoy that aspect of things. I like the fellowship. I like the camaraderie. I like lifting weights. I like running. I enjoy that part of it. But when it comes to eating, I am conformed to the image of this world, right? See, the world in our day and age, it has a constant bombardment of eat me stuff, right? I mean, and everything that is tasting good for you is actually very bad for you. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying today, right? You see, in some other generations, people ate for sustenance. In America today, more often than not, we eat for pleasure. We have this benefit that no other society before us has really had where we eat when things are good, we eat when things are bad. Is anybody there with me, right? And we plan our vacations around food, our big days around food. We, we just do that. I mean, it's part of the way that we live. So when I look at a verse like this, I start to think if I'm ever to fully attain physical fitness, then there's this area of my life where I'm still conformed to the image of this world. I got the workout part down, but when it comes to the eating part, I really struggle. So in a spiritual sense, what happens is maybe you're coming to church, you're showing up, you're doing a lot of the things that Christians do. You're praying, you're reading the word, you're uh, showing up, you're serving maybe from time to time, but there's some areas of your life that are still conformed to the image of this world, and God is calling us to address it. And how does he say that we address it? He starts to give us a hint about that in that verse. It says, by the renewing of your mind, by the washing of the Holy Spirit, by the washing of the word, as we submit our our hearts and our minds to Christ Jesus as we get the word inside of us it begins to transform us and change us from the inside out so he's starting to build this series he's saying first off here's the ideal state of what you would like to look like here's your boss rooting state now here's what you got to deal with if you ever want to attain that ideal state for your life then you got to deal with some of the issues that are going on in your life how do you deal with them you turn them over to Christ he will help you so he's setting us up for a win he's telling us how this process will work. And he starts to, you know, give us a, a hint or even more than that in James 1, through 24 of what we've really got to do to get victory. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. I'll stop right there. I think about Paul in, in the scriptures and, and Paul says, I desire to do what is good. I desire to follow after the things of God, but there's this sin, this flesh that often gets involved and I fall back into the patterns of this world. So you got guys like Paul, the super saint, who's dealing with the same kind of issues that you and I are. The Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus.